Hey, Wedding Confessionals listeners, it's Brooke. And Pam. And we are coming in early to let you know that what you're listening to is a two-parter. Yeah. So I always want to say two-pada. I'm going to do a de-padded we, reference. We talked a lot. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so um, it's my buddy Paul who came in town for Adam's wedding. He did. We wanted to talk a lot about Adam's wedding and Paul's wedding so much that it took up an entire episode. <laughs> <laughs> True. So, so what you're about to listen to is um, Paul talking about the wedding. And his wedding. Weddings, plural. And weddings in general. Yes. And then um, we will get to confessionals next episode. Let's do it. And then, so after the episode, we're going to come back in and give you bridal breaks. Yes. Because we are going to cut up halfway through the recording. So we don't want to leave you <laughs> hanging. So Pam and I will give you two bridal breaks. Maybe three if you're nice. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um, so we'll see you guys at the back end of the show. Bye. Bye. Something borrowed, something blue. Give us all your juicy news, sensational, irrational. It's Wedding Confessionals. Welcome to another episode of Wedding Confessionals. I'm Brooke. And I'm Pam. And the only thing we love more than weddings is talking shit about weddings. Um, I'm really in a wedding bubble. Yes, you are. In my wedding bubble, I mean, I'm still hungover from last night's wedding. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, in uh, the studio, yes. we have with us um, a fellow wedding goer of last night. He's my buddy. Yeah. Um, he is an actor and a writer. Mm -hmm. He's also a former roommate and was in my wedding. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Kaola. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to the pod. Hi, thanks. <laughs> um, so usually we chat in the beginning about pretty much whatever before we get into the the show so we're going to talk about the wedding from last night right yeah so welcome to wedding confessionals guys <laughs> where we uh will read your anonymous confessionals sent in yes. uh all in good fun but we have a guest on every leak and we like to get to know that guest but i don't want to get to know you yet because i want to talk about the wedding we just went to yeah <laughs> i good. want to hear all about it It was a good wedding so adam rose who's been on the podcast twice two times this is his mm -hmm. wedding mm -hmm. yes so it finally happened yay those crazy kids got married spoiler mm -hmm. nobody was jilted <laughs> no. it wasn't a runaway Phew. groom situation oh my god that being said oh, i kind of want to witness that just once yeah. but not at that what? wedding no I not like at adam. that wedding you want to no. witness it at a, you want to witness it at a wedding what you're like a i give it six one. months you know a like plus that. one yeah. all right all right yeah. yes agreed uh, yeah or maybe you were just not supportive to begin with. And you're like, oh, my God, you made the right decision. <laughs> That's what I mean. One that you'd be like, I give it six months. You know, yeah. like, you'd, you're like oh. okay. no, I someone's said, making yeah, a yeah, smart yeah. decision. Are you that, back on that, board? Or are you just run? supporting us? Would you join us in this evil, this evil pact? You know what? I, I can't <laughs> deny. I can't deny that it I would be it. fun to to be there <laughs> that happen. particularly if it was one with had like the cocktail hour first so you're already like in two glasses yeah you're oh. a little cocked yeah you're a little well, oh you mean primed. they have drinks before the wedding yeah mm -hmm. she did mm -hmm. that i did Me great too. idea yeah. oh the mm -hmm. wedding we went to last night yeah somebody made the announcement that there were refreshments before the wedding started and i was like babe go get us wine it's cucumber water Oh, I'm not mad that they had cucumber water. I think that was very thoughtful. It's nice. But the mis messaging by the stranger <laughs> that announced it was just not okay. <laughs> I felt betrayed. Yeah. I thought I was getting wine. He came yeah. back with cucumber water. Thank God he told me before I took a sip. He like let me know because that would have been like in his face. <laughs> Because it would have been Tristan's Did fault. you have the cucumber water? I didn't because my my husband is super prepared for everything. So we came with like four water bottles because it was an Your outdoor wedding. Your own cucumber water? <laughs> oh, I thought you brought like flasks. <laughs> no, no, no. It was it was just water because he okay. was like, it's outside in LA. We need to make sure that you we have you like hydrated. You said you came prepared. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I will say um, Erica was on the podcast before the wedding, who's mm -hmm. also our friend that yes. went to this wedding. Mm -hmm. And I remember we were chatting about Somehow it came up during the episode that I always pack either granola bar or a protein bar, mm -hmm. no matter when the wedding is, no matter what the size, because if there's you a food know. problem, yes. I want to be prepared. And the first thing Erica said to me when I arrived at the wedding was that, oh my gosh, you look so nice. Oh, so happy to see you. It was, did you bring a protein bar? <laughs> and I opened, she was checking you. And I opened my little clutch and I was like, bitch, there's two. <laughs> Nice. Well, could you imagine if I ate one and left Tristan hungry? No. He would have just turned over tables. He gets True. grumpy. True. He's usually a delight, but then he eats and it's the worst. 
Or he, he just doesn't, doesn't eat. eat. He doesn't, doesn't eat. <laughs> then he's the worst. He's yes. always the worst. Let's be real, guys. <laughs> oh, Let's yes. get into it. Oh. <laughs> so the wedding. Yeah. So outside. Outside. Super the, cute. The vows were beautiful. The groom, the, the groom number one, Barry, mm-hmm. went first. And he just said some beautiful just almost poetry from mm-hmm. the heart written by himself mm-hmm. and they were lines that it sounded like you were at the end of a rom-com it, like i gasped mm-hmm. at points i teared up oh i definitely oh please i like passed out kleenex beforehand i was like bitch we know all this is going down mm-hmm. everyone gets a kleenex like these people are in <laughs> love and we're super excited for them and they've been through a lot but so barry does his amazing vows and we have the angle of seeing Adam, our close friend, <laughs> yeah. who's a very emotional guy, mm-hmm. standing there making every face imaginable. It was a face journey. <laughs> he 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 looked. He was just trying not to burst into tears, but he just sure. was clamping down on every emotion that he could, <laughs> like in love, but also in pain. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. He he like loved his husband. His t- about to be husband so much but he also hated him just a little bit in that moment for almost making him cry you know you can kind of see that <laughs> yeah yeah no and it was and it, it, honestly at times you could even hear him go <laughs> which is a signature adam like noise right? yeah. Yeah, yeah it was perfect yeah but then afterwards adam went and his vows i don't mean to diminish them yeah. they were beautiful mm-hmm. um but yeah it was really sweet and it was short yeah i mean oh, it was in and out and really? also okay they walked down, back down the aisle at the end as oh, groom and groom yes. to uh, Heaven is a Place on Earth by Belinda Carlisle. And we yes. lost our minds. Yes. I immediately said, I am going to dance all night. Yeah. <laughs> and we did. That's yeah. a great choice. Yeah. 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 Um, so getting into the reception. Okay. <laughs> it was Okay, so th- there was a long line to get into the first, uh, into the hors d'oeuvre section. Okay. And it was at this very old house. And yeah, let's describe the scene. It's yeah. it's technically a national monument. It's right. the um, oh. Orcut, Orcut, which I was like, oh, Kurt, which I love, but it's not how you pronounce it. It's Orcut. It's Orcut. someone's last name. Hort- horticultural Ranch, I think. I, I read it a Wikipedia mm-hmm. aloud to people while in line because that's who I am. Yeah. I want everyone to know the historical significance of where, where we are getting are. our snacks. <laughs> yes. But it was a beautiful, like clearly an uh, some a rich guy back in like the nineteen hundred early nineteen hundreds, mm-hmm. uh, built a ranch and had like acres and acres of land, and then took a portion of it at the end and became a national monument. Yeah. So keep that in mind, national monument. <laughs> yeah. We cannot change things. Yeah. Okay. Know that. Know that. The okay. original Noted. architecture we discovered included two very interesting things. <laughs> I'm in line and I look up and on the arch of the window. At the top, in the center, there's just a swastika. Oh. And then I look around, and at the top of the arch of every window is a swastika. And then I look down, and in the tiling on the floor, there's a bunch of tiny little swastikas. Okay, I'd my like to point on out the ju- on the floor right I'd now. I'd like to point out, on top of all of us being super not racist, <laughs> Adam and his entire family is Jewish. <laughs> So, wait, when was this house built? So, since, since wait, it is a national monument. I will read aloud. Was... I will read aloud the explanation of what was going on okay. because we saw it and I was like, I need to. This thing is, when I was reading this aloud, I had yet to see a swastika. I didn't know they exist. I just thought it was a pretty ranch house and wanted to lo- know more. For listeners at home, if you were obsessed with the parent trap, the old one from the 70s, as much as I was, it mm-hmm. looked like that. Mm. It's very huh. like Spanish cute. style. Yeah, yeah. it's very cute. Um, so Mary Orcutt, the wife of William who created this ranch, mm-hmm. chose the symbol. Uh, sorry, let me start over. Visitors are surprised to find that the design of the home prominently incorporates swastika architectural decorations. Surprised sure. is a word. Sure, sure. <laughs> Definitely. Oopsies. Mary Orcutt, William's wife, the owner of the ranch, chose the symbol due to its connection with Native American traditions and did so before the Nazis turned it into a symbol of anti-Semitism. Talk about your decorations dating poorly. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like you think it's bad. It's like, oh, I have silver fixtures now gold's in season. Jesus. (laughs) That's, yeah. The 40s happened and this is over. (laughs) And they're everywhere. Yeah. It's not like it's just one like fountain with like adorable swastikas. <laughs> they're everywhere. 
And once you know to look for them, you can't you see stop them. Yeah. seeing them. Yeah. They're everywhere. So that oh was, gosh. that's what I learned while waiting in the drink line. Mm-hmm. Then going from the drink line to the appetizer station, mm-hmm. we got another interesting <laughs> design journey. <laughs> so there's these, there's these small, like, they're like murals, but they're made out of tiles. I don't know what that would be called, like a tile art or whatever. Well, because you said it's Spanish style. The yeah. House. So yeah. these are. In, it's, yeah. It's not it's, uncommon yeah, to see definitely. like decorative tiles and a picture. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they have a progressive three. I think it was three of them, right? There's a theme. Yeah. It's, it's a, a story. Theme. Story yeah. they're telling. And mm-hmm. um, as you go down, you see uh, the beginning of a cockfight, <laughs> the middle of a cockfight, and then the end of a cockfight with a bloody which is just death rooster on the ground and that people that are watching in the mural are like exchanging money what yeah and that's the, the story that's being yeah. told i never realized like in the order we're going it's like the first one's like oh chicken <laughs> <laughs> farmers <laughs> you know what i mean oh my gosh I'm thinking, like oh chicky chicks and then it's like oh, oh they don't, chickens and then don't like, like each oh, other chickies so Chicky's not getting along. And they then it's got... like, murder. <laughs> oh, my God. Chicky murder. murder. <laughs> but they got married outside. They did, yeah. So it, did everybody, is it possible that you couldn't have gone inside? Or is that where, like, the bathrooms were? Or, like. Oh, no. This was all on the outside. Oh, this is all... this is the courtyard, like the interior yeah. courtyard. Oh. So we were yeah. supposed to experience. It was really beautiful. We were like, yeah. basically in the enclosed part. Of like the half mm-hmm. circle ranch, right? Yeah. It's like a U shape. Yeah. So swastikas and cockfights. And cockfighting. Oh my gosh! That will not be the title of this episode because I don't want to get flagged. <laughs> by, <laughs> not the kind no. of cockfighting you expect at a good wedding. Providers, I don't want those <laughs> no. listeners. Please and thank you. <laughs> so yeah, that was before like the toast had even happened. That was our journey on just getting like a mm-hmm. drink and a snack. We were like, wow. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But it was, be- I say that, it was still a very beautiful venue. It was venue. gorgeous. The venue was beautiful. Once you, I'm, I'm, once you get past the, the swastikas, swastikas and the cockfighting, it was lovely. Oh I my will gosh. say, Erica, who was on the pod, was saying, she was in line with me when we were discussing the whole swastika situation. We were discussing, like, what a better way to, like, say fuck you to Hitler to be like Jewish gay wedding. That's true. <laughs> That's a good point. Right, that they were yes, one now flipping dicks. their middle fingers. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so anyway, the wedding though was really cute. It was really short, but mm-hmm. really sentimental. I love sweet. a short ceremony. And we had a lot of dancing. Mm-hmm. A lot How of was the food. Was the good. food was really good. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, they picked a great place. They had uh, desserts from Porto's. Yes, which is an excellent, excellent choice. Paul made the mistake of not asking for mashed potatoes. <laughs> Which extra mashed potatoes? You got like a little baby slop. Whereas I was like, you're gonna have to double down. Yeah. And I bragged when we got to the table. And I was like, I have more mashed potatoes than you. Little did I know, later on the dance floor, when I feel like I'm vomiting because I eat too many mashed potatoes, <laughs> Paul actually won. Well, but your your point was that I needed more mashed potatoes to lay down a base for all the drinking. It's true. Which was right. I had I under That's a good point. That's I a- undercarbed for a night of drinking. Yeah, undercarbed. <laughs> <laughs> you got to carb it up. Chips and guac are great. Yeah, so you, you got to eat carbo load before yeah. the marathon. And there were three True. speeches. Nobody went too long. Yeah. And then it was just dancing for the rest of the night. I It was the first time I ever uh, did the Hava Nagila. And I helped oh. lift Adam up in his chair. Did you? Yes, I did. Nice. Yeah. That is not something that you want to do for more than maybe 30 seconds. Because it gets hard. <laughs> yeah. Oh. There's a reason why they're a like, song? they were like, Tristan, you're helping. And he's like, but I'm not Jewish. I was like, get up there. They need like arms. <laughs> it, well, it's, it's, it was a very long. So I don't know how long. I, I assume the Havana Nagila can be almost any length. Probably. Yeah. It basically just, you just fade in and fade out based yeah. on the, the vibe of the but, room. So we mm-hmm. did, we did Barry and Adam. And then, then there was the dance. And then, the, then they lifted up Adam's parents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, Which I is really cool. I will one. say. I was like, I did the first one. Someone there was a lot of fear in those eyes. There <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame them. Mom wasn't too <laughs> sure about that. Yeah, <laughs> and then but then there was a there was like the cir- the dancing yeah. around in the circle. It was it was very energetic. Yeah, yeah. I liked it. It was fun. Yeah, nice. it was definitely it was a good time. And mm-hmm. that was at the point. Remember when I was like, guys, I hurt my back, so I don't think I'm gonna be dancing too much. <laughs> and that song came on, and I was like grabbing arms with everyone and mm. kicking my legs <laughs> and dancing in a circle because I'd had Advil and I'd had white wine. 
You didn't and that means thing. that the doctor mm-hmm. doesn't know shit and I'm going to live my life. Mm-hmm. You didn't feel anything till the next day. And then about 9.15, it was like, oopsies, Advil has rubbed off or, or ran off. What is it? Advil Wore off. Worn off. <laughs> and I, I I said my goodbyes early. White wine still I, has r- it. I know, right? <laughs> I rarely leave a wedding early. It's true. I did. I left 15, like 45 minutes 45 early. minutes yeah, early. Yeah, it's not that early. No. It's not bad. You did your time. I waited till last call. And yeah. I was like, okay, well, <laughs> my people have spoken. That's <laughs> decent. That's decent. If the bartenders are leaving. I'm out. I know. It's like, well, <laughs> I mean, I know what I'm supposed to do. Um, so, Paul. Yeah. Um, the way the show works mm-hmm. is uh, we, on top of shooting the shit, obviously, in the beginning of the episode, which I think we did really well, guys. Yes. I'm so proud. Um, Very nice. Is that we want to get to know you and your personal history with weddings so that when we get into the confessionals, we have a better understanding of your point of view. Okay. So um, I know it. Pam does not. Our listeners probably yeah. don't. I, I mean, I know you have a lot of fans, so <laughs> we'll see. I'm huge in France. Your mother's listening probably. Yeah. Hi, Ellen. <laughs> she made the cookies for your wedding. I know she did. She did. Oh, mm-hmm. sh- those cookies. Mm-hmm. Um, so we always begin with the same question. How old were you when you went to your first wedding? My first... You, I didn't go as a kid at all. Because I know a lot of your guests... Really? Yeah, because my... Mm-hmm. You were my this parents, big-ass Italian family. But none of my... I had three older cousins, none of whom got married when I was a kid. Ah. And then... You were part of the older crew? Uh, yeah, so it was the three older cousins, then my three siblings, then everyone else. So mm-hmm. I was the youngest of my siblings. But This you know. blows my mind, because I've been to so many of your family reunions, because yeah. we're super tight. You have a big-ass family on both sides. Yeah, it, I did. I Maybe did not they had weddings them. and just didn't invite you, and they don't like you. Maybe that was it. Well, no, <laughs> oh it was God. also that the weddings that did happen, my parent, my, my mother was like, I'm not dealing with you. So, she, so she, we would get babysat if she was going to a wedding. Oh. We didn't, she didn't take us. So okay, she was like, adult affairs. Yeah. She wants to have okay. fun. Yeah. yeah, she did. <laughs> you know my mom, a lush. So <laughs> She doesn't drink. <laughs> um, so I didn't go to a wedding until I think I was 19, and it was a family friend. Really? Wow. Yeah. Did you enjoy yourself? Did you immediately know that you're like, this is for me? I did. Well, I was. He a loves de- a wedding. I do love a wedding, but I was a de- <laughs> I was a designated driver because I was 19. Boo. Yeah. And oh. my my father, my father got um, hammered oh, at is that, this wedding. that wedding. <laughs> he got my father got blasted. Let's off of back Greyhounds. it up to say that <laughs> his dad at the time was told for years he was like, you know what, you and alcohol, yeah. you need to kind of you could have a beer. Yeah. But. And your mother had said my mother. So my mother had to leave briefly from the wedding, and she told the three of us, the "Do three, not let your father get drunk." Yeah, her and brother, it, the brother, the sister, and yeah. Paul. So okay. I was nineteen. So my sister was twenty-one, and my brother was twenty-five. And we were like, "Oh, mom, you're such a you know tight ass. Whatever, get over it." And we let our father get drunk. And my mother came. She took one look at my father, and she was like, "Your problem." <laughs> it's like, Oh my god! My father was blasted, like <laughs> vomiting on himself, blasted, oh gone. No. Yeah. They were like, "Let's get dad drunk. It'll be hilarious." Yeah. Not knowing because they yeah. never witnessed drunk dad, because he curbed it when he became a father. Yeah. But she knew him since they were little, so yeah. she was like, "I know you're gonna be a mess." My dad's a, my dad's a melodramatic drunk, very like, <laughs> very like, very like. Where's your mother? She never loved me. And it's like, Dad, <laughs> she's been married to you for thirty years. She had three children. <laughs> She doesn't love you right now because you're <laughs> blasted, but you know, she loves you on a normal day. So that was my first wedding. She never loved me. Yeah. I didn't know that was your first wedding. That was my first wedding. I just one. heard that drunk wow. story so much because mm-hmm. whenever I'm like, want to give him a drink? And they're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I will say the three of us only needed once. We learned after that. Dude. One smart. time. Yeah. <laughs> Mom is smart. Mom knew. We mm-hmm. should have listened the first time. So after you turned 19, did you start going to a lot of them? When you I start getting into start, like college age twenties, I didn't start going. I my my high wedding time came like early to mid twenties when I started going as a wedding date with my single girlfriends. Oh, so okay. I you were plus one. I was I I am look. I'm telling you right now, I'm a good plus one of the wedding. He's been a plus one for me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll right. dance. How come? Okay. I'll dance. Dance. I'll drink. Yep. And I will happily make fun of everyone that I don't know. And if I don't know <laughs> anyone, it is just open season. It's fantastic. <laughs> I, my table has fun. Every once in a while, you have to be careful. Be like, whose mother is that? And just check with the table. Yeah. And everyone's like, I don't know. You're like, great. She seems like a bitch. You know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> then you're good. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, you definitely, what I like about you as a plus one, and it's mm-hmm. the same reason I'm a wonderful plus one. I'm just throwing that out there. If anyone needs a plus one, mm-hmm. please write weddingconfessionals wow. at gmail.com. Yeah. We have both male and female options. Yes, if you, whatever you're Perfect. into. I mean, gender is fluid, so <laughs> right. do what Both you need coast. to do. Yeah, follow your, exactly. follow your bliss. But um, you and I both have the knack for not caring if we're the first ones on the dance floor. <laughs> it's true. And let me tell you, that's a gift to every wedding because mm-hmm. nobody wants to be first. It's true. Once the music starts, I just feel like they start like celebrate, like mm-hmm. celebrate. And they're like, okay, let's start with like a kind of like an oldie hit. Everyone will get on the dance floor and everyone's too shy. And mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I guess it's my time. Like go. stretching my quads. <laughs> Pumping out my chest, be like, let's get on the dance floor. And they yeah. got to do a little slow shimmy. Got to mm-hmm. pull up like a grandma or a little kid. But you do the same thing. Absolutely. I mean, you could, you could put on good music. You could give me an 80s jam. I will dance. Yeah. I don't care if I'm the only one. I prefer it if I'm the only dance one. Dance like no one's watching or <laughs> yeah. dance like clearly everyone's watching because yeah. no one's gotten up yet. <laughs> Wait. And everyone's sober. So, but nowadays they do the first dance mm-hmm. usually. Yeah. And then they bring on like one of the things that people do is bring on a few couples mm-hmm. yeah. after that. And mm-hmm. then they say it's open season. So there's usually already people on the dance floor. Those so people like walk away. They walk off. And you're thinking of before dinner. That's the cocktail hour. That's Motown. That's like your slow Elvis crooning songs. Yes. You need the couple someone, songs. Yeah. You eat dinner, you mm-hmm. have cake, and they're going to bust out like Raise Your Glass by Pink. You need someone to get on that dance floor yeah. when they hear the opening chords. That's I'm true. the one that just leaves the dust at the table. And most yeah. people are like, I just ate. I need 30 minutes or I'm going to yeah. drown. And but right. we're like, true, true. no, there's a job to do. Yeah. And someone's got to do it. And it's going to be me. <laughs> because It's going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> I would also dance to that first. Yeah, and sing fine. I definitely actually danced some of the moves to bye 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 <laughs> while saying bye to Adam <laughs> on my way out, which I thought was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you should say bye 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 was actually playing when you did yes it. no no <laughs> that was on and i did i knew some of the choreography because i'm a loser i don't know i just never left my brain <laughs> i liked I mtv so. no yeah, yeah it's yeah, fine i yeah. like it i followed all my dance beats but yeah mm-hmm. so so okay. great plus one you're a great plus one love yeah. it how many weddings uh have you been to at this point I knew this question was coming. Okay. Is it because I sent you a little list that said, know this stuff so you don't sound terrible on this podcast? No, it's because I'm an avid listener. Oh, that's true. You hit subscribe and you gave us five five stars. We're going to get back to your question, but I would like to know why more of your listeners aren't rating you. Let me tell you, you told that story about going to the dentist and drooling all over yourself. Uh I could not sprint to iTunes fast enough to give you five stars. (laughs) You, you're giving me so much. You have you have no sense of modesty, no humility. No. You are prostrating yourself on the altar of this I podcast. I don't know if you're insulting me right now. Oh my gosh! Th- thank you. I like Paul. And you and I think your five listeners, stars. your yes. listeners, should give you five. St- like if you're willing to share something like that, I. I splooshed out of my mouth onto myself at the dentist. I did. Yeah. Like a zit. We don't yeah. hold back. I was like, all right, you won. Not, I mean, not <laughs> wedding related, but five stars. Yeah. I don't know what more they want. What more do they want? That's my question. Anyway, my blood. <laughs> how many weddings have I been to? Yes. I started counting. And when I got to 30, I stopped. So 30. more than 30. Wow. That's pretty okay. good. Yeah. That's good. Have I did you... a, many years on that plus one circuit. I was to a lot of weddings. I didn't know anybody. Did you have fun though? I did. Yeah. I had a great time. Did you go like to a couple of weekend or like every weekend? I think the most I ever did in a year was probably like seven. Okay. Because one of my one of my really good friends, Lisa, she was on the she was on the podcast. Yeah, Lisa yeah. Messina. Yeah. Lisa and I have been to at least 10 weddings together. Really? Oh my yeah. gosh. Oh, because Lisa, remember she's, she's been to a ton? Yeah. yeah. Half of those weddings, I he was, was probably the I plus was her, one. I was her plus one. She's married yeah. now, but when nice. she was single, this was mm-hmm. her her fella. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So definitely more than 30. Oh my God. And so how many have you been like a groomsman? I, you definitely weren't like a, a, a Paul, not a Paul bearer. That's... <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> Different Rain podcast. Barrels. And now funeral concessions. <laughs> Different <laughs> podcast. Oh, my God. Guys, we're branching off right now. No, uh, we're not. A, a, ring bear, a ring bearer. Were you ever... I guess no. not because you were, so, you were no, never I, one as a little I kid. I never was a little kid. I no. think you'd be great at it. I would have... You would have killed that. I would have. 
look. You were like a little serious I little boy. I didn't grow to love attention. I came out this way. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, how many times have you been like, uh, I know that you've been a, a, a I was your bride's gay. Your bride's gay. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And then, uh, I was the best man a at my formal brother's wedding. title, by the way, that you gave yourself <laughs> while sending me a picture of trying on your sister's dress <laughs> that was her bridesmaid's dress for my wedding. I looked good. <laughs> Listen, we have similar coloring. We've already discussed that when we were roommates <clears throat> and you tried on my jeans that I was annoyed <laughs> that you looked better in them than I did. And I've seen you in heels. <laughs> and again, he's got some gams. I do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. No, he's okay. got them. Yeah. Um, so back to how many times have you been actually involved in a wedding as um, like a groomsman? So I was my brother. I was the best man for my brother's wedding. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then my sister didn't have a wedding party, but. Uh, I gave the toast at her wedding. So that's kind sort of, of yeah. sure. Yeah. You had a responsibility. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, I mean, that was the, that was the only official ones I've been in. And me. And I, I said it was a bride's oh, gay. Okay. Yeah. So um, <laughs> with my wedding, I think it's only fair for the listeners. Can you give them a peek? Was I terrible? Was I nice? Do you remember me showing up late? You know, I've heard that story in this podcast. I do not remember that. Really? No, I don't remember you showing up late. I remember... <laughs> I remember you doing a interpretive dance to Total Eclipse of the, of the Heart with Andy Schreier <laughs> yeah. rolling around on the floor in your wedding dress. Correct. <laughs> and I remember every single person from Maine not Shocked. knowing whether to wind their butt or scratch their watch. They were <laughs> bewildered as to what was going on. I definitely remember dancing and then at the end i was already on the ground and the only way to get out of the weird position i put myself in was to do a barrel roll yep. across the floor in my <laughs> bridal gown like you do and like, i was not that drunk no. i was just feeling the song mm-hmm. i mean how can you not feel total eclipse let me heart? tell you That's true. the stains were prominent after that <laughs> <laughs> Not coming out, yeah. but no, you were you were you were an easy bride. I mean, you had stuff that you wanted, but you were never rude about it. And yeah, and you were working too, so it wasn't like you were just directing people places. You were like, "I'm doing X. I need someone to do Y." So okay, was, yeah, I was fine. hoping for a more gossipy nice. story, but that's fine. I rolled on the ground. That was a good one. Yeah. That's good. I was nice. Yeah. Oh, are you just are you saying, surprised? Are you just saying that because it's not a confessional and I'm in the room? Should I no. leave and you can tell Pam? Oh, sure. Yeah, the, the <laughs> secret. <right? laughs> No, no, I really, like, I remember you being like, what? Can you tell the story that happened after the wedding reception and on the drive home, chaos erupted with one of the guests that I didn't really invite. Okay, here's what happened. We had a really big room. We had a really big room Mm -hmm. that, um, in the, like, bed and breakfast that we had that housed, it was, like, originally a game room. Okay. So they just put a bunch of beds in there. Mm-hmm. And it could house, I think it was, like, seven people. It was something stupid that, like, nobody would casually put in a room this many people. Sure. Unless it's, like, some creepy orgy. Like, yeah. what the hell? <laughs> so I had already... That's what we did. And because there was weekend. a limited <laughs> supply of, like, who could come, I kind of had maxed out who was allowed to come based on the literally the number of rooms of bed and breakfasts in this town. Mm -hmm. Like I only invited enough people that I could find housing for. But this one room, a couple of friends were staying in and we realized that due to the bed situation, we could throw in a couple extra people. And I just told Paul, bring whoever is fun. Adam Rose ended up making that list because he was still in New York. And I said, bring whoever is fun from New York on the road trip up to Maine. As long as they dance at the wedding, like it's on me. Like, I don't need a gift. Like just yeah. bring people to have fun because I knew the main people were kind of shy and they weren't going to dance as much. Yeah. And I knew some of my West coast people couldn't come because it's such a far trip. Mm-hmm. So I thought bring my New Yorkers. Yeah. So Paul. <laughs> so I bring this guy I used to be friends with and it, to my credit, he did dance <laughs> the way he danced. Okay. He was a dancer. He was a dancer. He was a literal dancer. Okay. He got, I did not know this man. Okay. I think I'd met him maybe once. Yeah. Hammered. We only like, had wine and beer. Yeah. He found a way. Yeah. When you said it was on you, he was like, I'm yeah. in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. And he was a dancer, so he was like all muscle and weighed like 100 pounds. So yeah. it was like, he didn't, doesn't have a prodigious tolerance. And we're driving back. I will the- put a link to what that, that <laughs> word need, means in the show notes <laughs> yes. for the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> and we're driving home. We're in my brother's car. It's my brother, my sister-in-law, me, and like 
Adam was there. It was at least Lisa was there. Yes. And and this guy and he just vomits all over the back of my brother's car and not a rental like his real car that he drove up from new york i was furious and humiliated i was so embarrassed i was like why are you this drunk this is unacceptable mind you i told a similar story about my father like not 10 minutes ago and i was completely fine with that (laughs) but But, he didn't puke in a car it uh, was outside exactly he puked in the parking lot like a lady (laughs) yeah right like a lady (laughs) and so he and this was from the wedding to the bed. The from the reception. Be- like reception, the wedding was yeah, over. So it's pretty the, late. And yeah. then these yeah. tiny little roads. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we get him we we get him out of the car and he's like. Well, I remember I heard your sister-in-law was like, get out of the car. Yeah. She's from Staten Island. And she was like, get out of the fucking car. Because now it's covered in yeah. oh, vomit. And worst. she's like shoving him out of the car. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Because he's so drunk. He just like, and he just like takes off his pants on the side of this main road. Because he's, he's like, covered in vomit. And he's like doing like. Like he's like dancing. He's like doing like arabesques. He's in tiny little boxer briefs, <laughs> like little teeny little undies, just flitting, arabesquing <laughs> across a tiny little like country you do. road. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I oh, I was so mad. But and you said former friend. Yeah. Well, oh dear. But I will say he definitely summed up the whole wedding. Because <laughs> what was the line that he said while dancing across the street? Main weddings, gotta love them. <laughs> 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 Main wedding, nice. Gotta love him. Like in full jeté. I do like not a... know this man. <laughs> I mean, amazing. he made. It's exa- I needed a story, and let me tell you, the next morning at brunch, I didn't know any of this, mm-hmm. and it was the buzz mm-hmm. of the morning. It oh, was yeah. like the fun gossip to talk about all morning long. Everyone was retelling the story mm-hmm. to everybody, and, and he was embarrassed and hungover, and it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Did he make it to breakfast? No, I don't think so. No, if we all <laughs> talked about him, he definitely wasn't there. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't think he But I think there. I said goodbye to him, Yeah, and he was sheepish. Uh, he should have been. He made an ass of himself. He so. did make an ass <laughs> yeah. of himself. Yep. There's always one. See? Yeah. No wedding's perfect, guys. It's true. It's true. I had a There's dancing vomiter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um... I want to get into your wedding. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's back it up. Mm-hmm. What's the name of your fella? <laughs> My fella's name is Vinay. Um, how did you guys meet? Yeah. So we met on OkCupid. Oh. Ooh. So right. this is pre-Tinder. It was OkCupid was work? like the hottest website at the time for well, dating, it right? Was actually, so Vinay will no? be mad at me if I don't tell this part of the story. I did not have a smartphone when we met, which is remains hugely offensive to him to he's this a day. he's a tech person like okay. works in the tech world okay. like yeah. gotcha so we what did you have like i had flip like a phone? flip phone okay yeah um it was all like desktop stuff like you had to go to your computer to retrieve your email or i did i think he had he had like an iphone 3 or something so he, he could tell with the razor it. yeah exactly <laughs> god the razor yeah. so uh yeah so it was i had done like a lot of online dating i went through like peaks and valleys you know and mm-hmm. then I think he was the only person I've met on OkCupid, though. Like, I met people on other websites, but OkCupid came, I met him, and then we, that was it. Do they match you? They, like, send you suggestions. Okay. And then I think I was a suggestion for him, and then he emailed me. Okay. Yeah. And what was it about his profile that you were like, ooh? He, well, because Besides, he, he's kind of cute. He's kind of cute. <laughs> um, he, he was funny. Like, I, I do believe that online dating is unfair to people who are not naturally writers. That's because true. You, yeah. it's hard to write a good profile and which and Vinay is actually not a great writer so but he must have really worked on this because it was good but he I um, wonder if he had a friend help maybe but he like did you never ask him I don't think so I'm gonna grill him later yeah. go oh. keep going but like I remember <laughs> like I remember specific things about his profile like he said like when I would it was something like someone something something random about yourself and he said oh when I was young my older sister convinced me that I was a transformer and my special power is that I can turn into a washing machine <laughs> wait what yeah <laughs> And he said, That's like, awesome. it's like, what do you worry about? And he was like, I worry if I ever go bald, I may not have a nicely shaped head. Like stuff like that. That's like. He's funny. Yeah. That's like, fun. like that. I remember that. And I, like, I remember yeah. that. You remember this that this. Yeah, yeah. That's memorable. And it's yeah. funny. We think it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So it like it's stuff like that. That's what. And then. Yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. First date sparks right away. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the first date. First date we went to lunch and he had. He had a. Oh God! So our first date, we went, <laughs> <laughs> we go to brunch and we sit down and we had like been texted. We had texted 
we, we moved quickly through the on here's a tip for online daters mm. don't like talk with someone for like three weeks oh that's the worst no, i did that once it's for terrible a week and get in get find out, out rip right. the band-aid yeah yeah yes because okay. if you wait Good too tip. long and then it's a dud it's like it's i like, wasted guys, a month so on this loser yeah, yeah. okay Ugh. and uh so we sit down and like i was i was expecting this to be a good date like we had had a good rapport mm -hmm. and uh he sits down and he's like i may need to leave because my friend who's on my family plan lost my lost his phone last night and he needs to get a new cell phone so immediately i'm like that's a lot what <laughs> so, i know who this friend is yes yeah totally it's who i'll say i mean i'll say no but i immediately was like oh yeah Hoon. yeah so he <laughs> they're very close so i'm like okay. all right and and i'm like but it sounded like you know you well had that, that sounds person. like a really dumb lie yeah, yeah so does. i'm like that's a lie but then he's like so but i don't think you will because i gave him my social security number and i gave him my online login with verizon and i gave him my password so i'm like oh this is real like he actually did do this i also love how on brand this is for your husband because he's very organized <laughs> yes. and very like on the ball with everything yeah. and like gets like everything is tied in a nice little bow right that's and hilarious clearly they're close because he gave him all this like yeah really they're, he's his best yeah. friend yeah it's yeah. like it might as well be his brother yeah, yeah. yeah. totally yeah. okay so so that but then i yeah i don't know your social security number Pam. no <laughs> <laughs> i hear you're supposed to keep those private why aren't we that close <laughs> i'll give it to you later don't okay worry. cool 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 so uh so I was like, oh, I guess this is like not a lie. He actually is interested. So then we, we had a good date. And then the, he's a big Lakers fan. So he's like, the Lakers are playing. Do you want to come over and watch the game? And I said, sure. I don't really want to watch the Lakers game, but I'll, I'm having a good date. So but I'll go I want to watch, watch you. Room, I'll watch the <laughs> game. And then I, I don't know if everyone feels need to say this, but I was like, but just FYI, I'm not going to sleep with you. And he was like, okay, fine. Come to find out years later, he was like, oh, he's just saying that. We're gonna totally going to bone later. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm not going to sleep with you on the first date. I'm a lady. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was our first date. So you went and you watched basketball. We watched basketball. I mean, we made out. I'm not like frigid, but like. We <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a prude. <laughs> no. Also, because basketball uh, is not really kind of boring to you. So you're yeah. like, well, I'd rather make out than watch basketball. Yeah, your mouth is way more interesting than the Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you guys started dating. Mm -hmm. um, how long between um, seeing his OK Cupid profile to we get down the road of like, we're going to get engaged? We started dating in 2010. We got engaged in 2013. Okay. And can we talk about yeah, sure. the proposal? Because uh, it's interesting because it's unconventional. Oh, yeah. so, I'm here. So if it isn't apparent yet, it's, it's important to know in the story that my husband and I are like opposites attract. Like we do not agree on basically anything like <laughs> we will have the opposite opinion on everything um so we we had discussed getting married like we knew we were going to get married but we had, neither one of us had like proposed to each other were you living together at this point yeah we okay were, we were living together and <clears throat> we were having a disagreement over who should propose to who Okay. because oh because you're having a disagreement about anything anything right yeah so my <laughs> argument because i was one who wanted a wedding i wanted to have a party and mm -hmm. i liked weddings he okay. he was just wanted to do it like at city hall and be done with it and didn't want to spend the money both okay. valid points of view but my point was well if we're getting married and i'm the one who like the wedding and marriage matters to you should propose to me because it means something to me okay and his point was it doesn't mean anything to me so you should do the work <laughs> Oh my god! And this is weird. I'm kind of on Vinay's side. Is that weird? Uh, yes, because you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that, like, if you have this swoony romantic view of weddings, then you're the one that would think of the swoony romantic proposal. Together. Whereas oh. he's kind of like he sees this as kind of like transactional of like, yes, we're going to be together for a lifetime. We should legally get this done so that we can be on the same insurance. Like, do you like? I get it. If you're like that pragmatic brain person. But then I would do a bunch of work that would be completely unappreciated by iRobot. And <laughs> <laughs> but you have the ability to you. melt the robot heart. Well, you can make it start to tick. Okay. I never learned to love. So we were having this ongoing debate and I asked his best, one of his, Wait, another one of his best friends. how long did this debate go on? Uh, like a couple months. <laughs> so, okay. And then you decided to pull in friends for input? So we, we would like pull people. 
be like, who do you think is right? Do you do the, a Twitter poll? They do this all the time. When what? they get in arguments, they will chart to poll their friends to see where you land. Yeah. And so one of his... And Paul doesn't like the fact that I don't always choose his side, <laughs> just like true. right now. He's annoyed at me. So we were we asked one of our best friends, Pooja, who's uh, Vinay's friend from uh, high school and college, and she immediately was like, Paul's right. You should propose. And that, for me, was enough. I was like, okay, as long as like someone on that should should be quote unquote on his side is mm-hmm. on my side that's enough and i and i wanted to do it so uh his birthday is uh <laughs> july 10th and it was coming up and i was like i don't know what because we're not like touchy-feely romantic people and like you just said he was a robot yeah. so <laughs> i, I kind of get sense. that and yeah. honest and i'm truly not either like i i will undercut any serious moment with a sarcastic comment as fast as i possibly can so i was like how am i going to do this in a way that like is true to us but also like is sweet because i'd wanted it to be sweet. wait so you did decide that it would be you that did it you yeah, just gave after, up after Pooja said it should be him i was like okay i'll do it wait wait so she said it should be him that proposes yeah which made you do the opposite yeah because i was like his friend agrees with me none of this makes sense <laughs> no. to me <laughs> no we're gonna do a poll with our listeners <laughs> <laughs> that's yes. fine so I'm, anyway his birthday's coming up I'm, right. you think boom go so I, I was trying to figure out what i wanted to do and then i was thinking i didn't wait what to do for his birthday or what to do for the what, proposal what to do for the proposal okay yeah so i and i and i i i was like oh you know what i kind of want to write something because i feel like if i say something in the moment he's not going to remember what i said and okay. we and we don't like say that is thing. true yeah, nobody we, remembers and yeah. we don't We've say things. a lot of emotion going on yeah, yeah. like we are we are again we disagree on everything so we bicker and we go back and forth sarcastic comments a lot so i wanted to say something sincere and nice that i love him you know Mm -hmm. so i was like i know and he has this he has this pie that he loves from um uh momofuku called the grasshopper pie which i hate making because it's a pain in the ass to make and it's like 18 different steps is it minty and chocolate it's a chocolate mint brownie pie Ooh, Um, like a graham cracker crust so it's just a royal pain in the ass to make but i was like okay i'll make him the pie and i'll write in this note and i'll i'll write on the pie and icing will you marry me mm-hmm. so that's nice yes i thought so so in cursive his birthday is coming uh, <laughs> no it was it was in it was in block all capitals i'm okay. not that skilled. i'm not good at it either <laughs> remember pam when i tried to make you a birthday cookie cake yes and i tried to do like happy birthday pam and i kept messing up i think i just ended up doing a heart which was weird <laughs> <laughs> that's right and i kept trying oh to do the, the h and i get like three letters in and it was like fuck and i kept like <laughs> swiping it off and You're trying like, again the it. cookie cake heart. itself was beautiful and perfect but finally i got to the point where i was like i'm just gonna do a heart which looks oddly romantic but whatever <laughs> <laughs> we're close it was a good cake it was so good and i do love you it was perfect because i don't that cookies are my favorite yeah, so. yeah cookie cakes over regular cakes guys uh, I, I think i wound it. up with just marry me question mark because the will you was taking too much Aww. space <laughs> so um <laughs> But so Vinay is a person who like if he knows there's a present coming, he wants it immediately. He doesn't care that it's for his birthday or on his birthday. He wants to have the present right then. Wait, so days early? Yeah. Like so if I order a present. Online and second that it arrives. Yes. He he wants wants it. He wants it. Were you baking this? No. Was he baking this pie? So so he had asked me. My parents had asked me, what does Vinay want for his birthday? And I asked him and he said he wanted a a clothes steamer. So I was I was like, oh get him a clothes steamer so he asks me and and I, he i do not remember this part of the story at all apparently he asked me should i get a clothes steamer for myself and i said no you'll get one for your birthday which he thought meant i was getting him a clothes steamer for his birthday <laughs> so it's the day it's the day of the show y'all and I'm like, <laughs> and it's one of those like swelteringly hot new york days that you just need it to thunderstorm but it it it's not. Mm-hmm. So it's just like you're swimming down the street to try to. So and I have to go get like white chocolate and grapeseed oil and like all these random ingredients to make this pie. Ugh. And I didn't want to get them too soon because I didn't want him to know Wait, that I was getting, making it. So yeah. I had to get them the day of. So I'm like walking around and then like the heavens open. and It's just like this downpour. There's like this thunderstorm. And I'm texting him and I'm like, oh, God, I, I don't know if I can get to the grocery store today. And he's at work. He's like, I don't care. I don't go to the grocery store. Why are you texting me? So, <laughs> <laughs> so I finally I get everything. I get home. I'm like soaking wet. And I like I have to make it now because it's mm-hmm. like on the time schedule. So making the pie, get it all done. And he comes home and he walks in and 
he's in his head looking around for the steamer. The me. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, oh my god. So I'm like I'm just like sitting there and I'm looking at him and he's looking at me and I said I look at the table and he and he looks over there and he's like yeah I know you made the pie where's the steamer and I'm like can, can you look at the pie please closer <laughs> by the way your apartment is not huge no he was very focused on his close to <laughs> he was not interested in this pie it's not like he had to walk into another room it's like an open concept apartment right he just had to like look a little closer yeah <laughs> so I'm like can you look a little closer so he walks over and he, and he went <gasps> And I was like, well, read the note I wrote you. And he's like, well, can I answer first? And I said, Aww. yes. He said, yes. And then he read the note. Aww. And he said, See? And he said, See how happy he was? Mm-hmm. He appreciated it. Yeah. Which means Vinay and I were right. Questionable. <laughs> <laughs> so did you have a hard time eating the pie since it was all pretty? Or you don't like that pie anyway? I don't like that pie anyway. <laughs> Uh, no, we, but we ate it. Uh, we ate it that night, like that well, on his birthday. On his birthday, yeah. So you will always know the proposal date because that's it's true. his birthday. birthday. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's clever. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's good. Aww, that's cute. Yeah. So we picked up on the robot brain of your mm-hmm. uh, then fiance, now husband. Mm-hmm. How quickly did we go into wedding planning mode? Uh, I was it like two bites into the pie. I proposed. <laughs> we, I proposed on a Wednesday. Yes. On Saturday, we had found the venue. What? Oh my God. <laughs> or, oh my God. Kidding me? That's a lot. We didn't find the venue. He had a list of venues to see on Saturday. So we saw venues that Saturday. And then. Machine. Yeah. Wow. Machine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have got to give all the credit where it's due. I used to be like good in, because I came through theater school. So I was like a mm-hmm. good planner amongst my theater artistic friends. Yeah. I did nothing to plan for this wedding. Everything that I came up with, he had already thought of like four weeks prior and had already taken care of. He's a smarty pants. Oh my God. He was a machine. He had spreadsheets. He knew it. Like he... I was Uh, included on some of the spreadsheets. Really? Yes. As a a prep, I had to come in and prep. Yeah. His his brain was like in overdrive. He had it like bang, 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 bang. Yeah. It was impressive. Mm -hmm. Um, Tell us a little bit about your actual wedding. Wait, what was the date between... Okay, so Wednesday you got married. Wednesday mm-hmm. you got in, uh, proposed, or you proposed to him. Saturday you're looking at venues. Mm-hmm. How far later was the actual wedding? How much planning time did you have? We we got engaged July 10th, 2013. We got married October 4th, 2014. Okay. okay. We were planning so early that one of our vendors thought we were getting married October 4th, 2013. She actually sent the contract with the wrong year on it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> She's like, no one's this prepared. Yeah. Right. You were. We were. Well, um, he was. I, I re- Again, I really, I can't take credit for it. <laughs> so I want to talk about a detail of your wedding. First okay. of all, describe the actual physical space. Oh, so we got married at the Dumbo Loft in... in Dumbo, Brooklyn. which stands for... Uh, development under Manhattan Bridge Overpass. Yes, it's oh, in Brooklyn. Okay. It's very yeah. cool. Very, okay. very hip. Dumbo very cool. sounds corny. It's mm-hmm. very cool. Yeah. All right. Um, and well, I, well, we have to talk about my wedding with Pam because I had a food truck wedding. <laughs> I didn't and, know uh-huh. when or how to bring this up uh-huh. because it wasn't one. Uh, no, no. Well, it could, because I hear your complaint about food trucks weddings, and I think I I want to pitch you my wedding. Okay. Yes. And I want to see how you feel about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Explain I'm the open. space. So the the loft is it's. It's a it's a cheap venue for New York, so it was I think it was like three thousand dollars for the whole day. Okay. In New York, but you had to bring everything. They provided nothing. The space, yeah, that's an it. empty shell. Okay. So, the back. Which, yep. With Vinay's brain was fine because he was like no problem. I got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So um, <laughs> he's already like Lego building into it. his brain. Yeah, I I would have been in tears in like two months, but he was like fine. So, uh, we decided we wanted to do a food truck wedding because we thought it would be too like. Like to bring the caterer in, it was kind of like it wasn't a great space for that, like a seat. Because there wasn't a real kitchen. Yeah, there right? was no real kitchen yeah. space, so it was like we're like food oh. truck wouldn't be a better idea. So what we did is we hired three food trucks, mm-hmm. and the first one was the Calexico food truck, which was Mexican food. And they, when people start, so we did a cocktail hour ceremony reception, mm-hmm. um, like you, yeah. So we, when the food truck arrived, the first food truck for Calexico, they just started pushing out food. So you didn't have to go up and order. You just went up and like took food. Grab something. So it was immediately like you could lay down a base immediately. So you didn't have to wait to eat. Okay. And which was good because fun fact about our wedding, Vinay made four signature cocktails. Mm-hmm. And 
the job of the waiters was just to dump the bottles into the big uh, mixer for people to serve themselves. Mm -hmm. But they were supposed to stir it and add ice, which they did not. So people were shit faced. Shit faced at our wedding. I had (laughs) one cocktail and was on my ass. It was. They were. Like at 6 p.m., I went up to Vinny and I was like, you need to stop drinking because we're not married yet. And you need to talk into a mic. Like, stop drinking. <laughs> so I, I gave a speech at Paul's wedding, so I didn't drink it all before. Yeah. And then the second it was over, everyone else was dealing with food. But I was like, I finally want to get a drink. Mm-hmm. So an empty stomach had mm-hmm. that blast of a cocktail and was like, woo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. They were hammered. So, um uh, but they were tasty. They were delicious. They were great. That's why people got so hammered. And actually, <laughs> cocktails are cheaper than wine. So we got to re- return a bunch of wine that we bought and got money back. Wow. Whoa. There's a tip. Yeah. A good cocktails are tip. cheaper than wine. Um, so we did that. And then we did the reception. And then we had a grilled cheese truck come for the second, for the second course. You had to wait online there, but you had already eaten something. So okay. you weren't just like starving for dinner. So the first one was like your appetizer. Yeah. Okay. And, and you then... could get you could get tacos, you could get quesadillas, you could get like chips and stuff. Like you could you could lay down a solid base, I feel like. Is that true, Brooke? Do you to like be this? honest with you, I didn't even know either way because Tristan basically just kind of took care of me for the night. Aww. Well, in his defense, it's like this is kind of like my family's wedding and my right. friend's wedding. And he's I mean, obviously, he's very close to you guys, but mm-hmm. it is kind of like he's the more plus one of, of the two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of like nervous about giving the speech. And I think he was just trying to be like, you did a really good job. Let me grab stuff for you. Yeah. And also, like, he's not the big like he'll go on a dance floor, but he's not the biggest dance floor person. So I think having a reason to, like, do something else mm-hmm. and feel helpful and productive and, like, yeah. chat with people. So I never actually went to a food truck or a station. <laughs> I just sat oh. and food was brought to me. That's nice. Yeah. So yeah. relationship goals, ladies. That's yeah, what you're looking for. You. It's good. <laughs> So that was the second course. And then our, our um, dessert was ice cream sandwiches. So those were just put out and you just walked up and took one. There was no wait for those. They were all frozen. They were just on display for you to take at immediately at your leisure. So wait, go back to the grilled cheese truck. Mm-hmm. What were your options there? You could get, <laughs> you could get multiple kinds You're of grilled cheese. You're convincing her. So you could get like a, there was like a, like a, like a Granny Smith apple blue cheese Mm-hmm. Uh, one and then there was good. one with bacon and then there was like a basic one and then they had a salad that you could get like a uh, like a slaw kind of feel and then I think there was something else offered but I don't remember okay. it's funny because the menu is still sitting on my refrigerator and I look at it every day oh that's cute <laughs> <laughs> all right well I mean so appetizer and different options mm-hmm. and then dessert yeah what I was saying is like I I'm not convinced but i do <laughs> she'd be willing to come to see yeah no, i do like the fact that you were thinking about your guests and making sure that they got fed so that mm-hmm. if they did have to wait for the second one um and again it's you know it all depends on the venue and that's the venue you choice you chose and this is what worked for their for that right so i'm 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 fine with your food <laughs> truck <laughs> I love but. my two friends that are very stubborn having to have this conversation. <laughs> awesome. So you're, wait, are you now team food truck? Or you team Paul's food t- truck choices? I'm, I'm team Paul. Okay. Oh, Your choices. Oh, Just you. team Paul in general. Yeah. But, Wink. but overall, I, I would shy away. I'm still not a fan of food trucks. Yeah. But I get it's it. It's something that needs to be managed. It. It's something that needs to be thought about. Like you shouldn't just be like, because I because we did talk about that. We're like, if we just have like having 120 plus people here, if we just have one food truck, it's that's impossible. You have to think about a way to get people food. So, yeah. yeah. I'm glad you guys have come to a very grown up We've conclusion on this topic. <laughs> Hey guys, we're back. Hey. Pam's already getting nervous about the <laughs> quiz at the end. We're just doing bridal breaks, Pam. I know. She There's... just asked me, are we doing the quiz? I'm like, yeah, it's an episode of Wedding Confessionals. Of course we're doing the quiz. I know. I got to keep you sharp. It's, it's true. <laughs> but first, um, guys, welcome back to this part of the podcast. 
<laughs> um, where we're going to give you bridal breaks because we do in every episode, even when it's a two parter. Yeah. So um, bridal breaks for anyone new to the podcast are just suggestions we give to not only brides, but anyone hoping to plan a wedding of Everyone. something that's fun. Yeah. Fun that has nothing to do with weddings. Just take a break. Yep. Take a break from being a bride. Be a human. Be a fun person. Be a different person than you are when you stare at Pinterest. <laughs> Or at seating charts. Yes. Or, or the oh. RSVP list yes. when people haven't responded oh, and it's, it's a worst. week away and you're like, how hard is it to send a damn piece of paper in the mail? It's hard. God, you need a break. I'm getting stressed out just thinking about it. So um, <laughs> uh, Pam usually gives a cocktail and I usually get some silly pop culture things because mm-hmm. we don't have a guest right now since Paul comes in in part two and gives his bridal break. Yes. I thought I'll give two. And that way it's fair. Yeah. That we give, everyone still gets three. We don't leave people shortchanged. <laughs> Sometimes we give two and I feel bad. I feel like we're being lazy. <laughs> really? I don't know. People expect three. Okay. You give well, people... sometimes you get four. Well, I mean, but getting four is different than getting two. Two seems kind of lame. All right. Well, three it is. Yeah, because with three, three, the odds are you might really, really like one. With two, it's like, Meh. the odds are the odds are less. Not That's that true. you don't love our suggestions. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Anyway, so um, I'll go first. Uh, my first one is a book that I just read. It was called Hey Ladies. Hey, hey Ladies. Hey ladies. Um, it's from Michelle Markowitz and Carolyn Moss. And they originally wrote this um, series for The Toast, the website that I don't think exists anymore. But oh. um, it's a, a funny series. It's kind of satirical about um, women emailing each other back and forth, like in a group thread, a group email. and um, Just but, continuous? Yes. Oh. So the book is an entire year of continuous texts and emails from a group of friends. Oh, my gosh. And the fun part is one of the big arcs of the whole thing is a wedding. So, so I have been told by multiple people that I needed to read this book. Nice. And they were right. It's super fun. So even though it's about weddings, I feel like it's not your wedding. So it's a little different. And it's okay. fun and silly and completely over the top. And I feel like if you want to get away from your wedding, you can get into this wedding. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, it's called Hey Ladies. Um, you can get it anywhere. I saw it on Amazon. I saw it in bookstores. It's everywhere. Hey Ladies, uh, Michelle Markowitz and Carolyn Moss. Go get it. Fun. Yeah. All right, mine today is from a web- website called cookingbride.com. Ooh. Yeah. We're both hitting the wedding stuff. I know. Yeah, we're not even mean to. Just we're totally like, by we're accident. like, break, nothing to do with weddings, and then but both of us. <laughs> maybe a little. So we lie to you. It's fine. Well, all right. So I got to admit, I, I do like a sweet drink. I think, I think we've what? maybe mentioned that once or twice. Yeah, we've been out for about a year now. Everyone's picked up on that. <laughs> This one got me by the name. Okay. It's called the Gangster Martini. Okay. And I'm like, "Um, yes, please. It could be terrible. And I'm going to drink this. Yeah, you like a fun name. name. Yeah, anything with a a terrible pun, I'm going to order it in a restaurant. (laughs) Pretty much. Um, And it happens to be sweet. (laughs) And it kind of and it kind of looks like a candy corn. It's oh, it's interesting. Like, is it in like a martini glass? It's or? in a martini glass, okay. and it's got like an orangey on the bottom, and then like a middle yellow, and then the top. I don't know. The picture just looked like it a looks candy corn. pretty. It does look pretty. What's in that? It's got thing? a fun name. So I had I learned something today because I, it has a liqueur in it that I did not know. Okay, and it's called um, a tuaca. Okay. And the Tuaca is a brandy um, produced in Italy, and it is um, it's a brandy with citrus essence and vanilla and other secret spices. Ooh. That's literally the the Wikipedia. Can you get it like Bevmo or anywhere normal? Sure. Okay. Tuaca. I've seen it. I've okay. just never heard never it. It's experienced like a, it. It's a brandy. So it's got Tuaca, Tuaca, mm-hmm. amaretto. Sounds like Chewbacca. I like it. Kind of. Yeah. Vodka, pineapple juice, and then throw in a maraschino cherry for for fun. I'm so sorry, Pam. Ruth wants to come in for this very short recording we're doing of bridal breaks. She doesn't want to miss it. I know. She does wants to know more about this Chewbacca drink. Hi, Chewy. How am I mini Chewy? You're more of like a 
a Wookiee. Not a Wookiee. What's the little guys? Ewok. Ewoks. <laughs> she is, is a little, little fat Ewok. She is a little Ewok. Um, anyway, so check out cookingbride.com. Her, you know, sometimes with these recipes or any sort of recipe, um, people write a long thing and then the recipes at the bottom. Hers was actually very enjoyable um, and entertaining to read. So oh, that's a pleasant surprise. I know. <laughs> It was. So check it out. The Gangster Martini on cookingbride.com. Oh, cool. Right on. Um, so my third one, my throwaway extra bonus one, and she's on the table. The dog's on the table. Oh, hello, and she's Ruth. going underneath oh. the microphone. Hi, Ruth. <laughs> and she sat down. She has something to say today. And she's licking Pam. Okay, we're all we're back to normal. Good God. That was almost a crisis. <laughs> <laughs> so my third one is um, a Twitter handle that I've been following, uh, or a Twitter account, I guess. Um, it's called um, Wheel of Fortune Answers. And the Twitter handle is um, WOF Answers. So at WOF Answers. And what this guy or girl, I'm not sure who it is, does is they take, you know, when they show Wheel of Fortune and it's like only a couple of the letters have been turned around. Yes. And they just fill it in with what they think the answer is. And it's always the most like obscene and ridiculous thing that either makes <laughs> no sense or is kind of gross and inappropriate. And I feel like, you know, sometimes when my Twitter feed is full of like news and dark stuff and a lot of tense things, mm -hmm. it's nice to have a splash of com complete absurdity in there. And it's always like Vanna's, Vanna White standing there with like a big smiling. smile on her face, yes. gorgeous gown. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the, the, the two that I popped up um, was a person and it's like only a couple of letters that are available and it's supposed okay. to put out three words. Mm -hmm. And they decided that the, the correct answer was supreme beard asshole. <laughs> like this doesn't even <laughs> make sense. And the other one was, um, yeah. those two words and it said what are you wearing and the answer was slick poops <laughs> so what? gross it's so weird it's always weird sometimes it really works and other times just like the this is not a thing anyway so it's um wheel of fortune answers or at wof answers on twitter and i think it's silly but it makes me laugh <laughs> It does make you laugh. You were giggling about it before we even started I was started trying recording. to find ones to give examples of. So I was scrolling through their thread and just like giggling to myself like a crazy person. Okay, Pammy, that's the end of Bridal Breaks, which means we do begin our quiz of My learning. My favorite part of the show. You should. It's the way that listeners can find out more about our podcast. It's true. You should love this part. I do. This is marketing at its I finest. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we do what we can. Um, so if you want to learn more about um, our podcast, including show notes, um, where should you go, Pam? Check us out on WeddingConfessionals.com. Yeah. And if you want to... Um and if you want to learn more about where you can find us on social media, also at WeddingConfessionals.com are those links. Where are we on social media? You can find us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Instagram, y'all. We love for you to send us your confessionals. They're so fun. Send us your stories. Send us your questions. Send us your rants. Yep. There are three different ways. One is an email address. What is it, Pam? WeddingConfessionals at gmail.com. Yeah. There's also a phone number, 434-933-2663. That's 434-933-2663. The third and most popular option is to go to our website, which is what, Pam? WeddingConfessionals.com. And hit on a tab, which is what? Tell us your secret. Yeah. Hit on Tell Us Your Secret. From there, there's a little form there to fill out. What's part one of the form, Pam? Um. Well... It's a name, but it doesn't have to be yours, or yeah, you can write put it whatever. whatever you want. And then the second part is just the part where you put in your drama. Your story. Yeah. yeah. And then the third part is you have the little button that just says send. Submit. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's very simple. That Super way, easy. we don't need your email address. We don't nah. care about your phone number. No. Nah. We just want your stories. So send them our way. Um, Pam, we are available on Apple Podcasts slash iTunes. We are. Um, we love getting rates and reviews. It helps us move up in the little search engine so more people can find our show. Yeah. Pam, what number of stars would you like people to click on? Well, you know, I love five. It's her so, favorite number. Yeah. Um, I also enjoy the number five, but mm -hmm. I also enjoy you being politely critical of what's going on on the show. Maybe you have some critiques and we can do a little better. Maybe you give us four stars because Pam doesn't do as well on the quiz as she should. <laughs> <laughs> five stars. <Rude. laughs> Pam does a five star job on the show. <laughs> okay, I have to put Ruth down. Does she want to jump? No, she's back. No, just I think okay. she wants to go down. Okay, let's do it. It's like she wants to go to where the guest is sitting to be cuddled, but there's not a third person and she doesn't understand. She's out. She has a little brain. Bye, buddy. 
See you later. That All was right. fun. That was fun. I just got a cameo. Thanks, Ruth. <laughs> so, um, Pam, besides Apple Podcasts, you yes. can find us in a lot of places. I'm going to be so nice many. this time. Okay. Because you were so nervous before. We were going <laughs> to split seize them. So you're going to say one and then I'm going to say one. Okay. Okay. You ready? You go first. Uh, and are we starting with Apple Podcasts? That's number one okay. for you. I'm going right. to say Google Play. Um, Stitcher. Podbean. Player FM. Overcast. Downcast. Podcast Republic. Podcast Attic. Podcast Land. Uh, Castro. Castbox. Um, mm, Spotify. Pocket Cast. Um, I Heart Media or Radio. Yeah, I guess Which it is, is it? I Heart Radio. I Heart Radio. Now, it was okay. weird because I was told it was I Heart Media, but then my app comes up as I Heart Radio. So, so fuck it, it's I Heart Radio. Yeah, I made the change. Executive All right. order approved. Um, <laughs> uh, you said I Heart Radio and yes. Spotify, yes. Pod Paradise, uh, YouTube, and Podtail. That's it. Woo! Look at you. You did it. Yay! So proud of you. <laughs> so um, uh, stay tuned to next episode next week where we do part two with, pa- with Pod. With, with pa- Pod. <laughs> with Paul. <laughs> with Paul, we get into confessionals. It's super fun. Yep. See you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Special thanks to Andy Schreier for our adorable theme song and to Ramsey Malay and Brian Maylard for their technical support, which we desperately needed. Want to make sure you don't miss a single episode? Subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, or SoundCloud, and make sure to give us a five-star rating, or I guess a four if you're being judgy like us. If you have a crazy story to tell or need some advice, you can reach us by going to our website, weddingconfessionals.com. Or you can email us at weddingconfessionals at gmail.com. Or leave us a voice message at 434-933-2663. That's 434-933-2663. And as always, we will never reveal the names in order to protect the innocent and the annoyed. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're looking for those links, you can find those and more at our website, which you haven't figured out by now is weddingconfessionals.com. See you guys next time. Bye.